And now I'd like to invite up Dennis Brown, the 2010 President of the Seattle King County Realtors Association to present the award to our beloved Slade Gordon. Thank you, Susan. As the 102nd president of the Seattle King County Realtors, it is my pleasure to present our Seattle First Citizen Award. Thank you to all of our tributaries this evening and to our MC, Susan Hutchison. Your words of appreciation have given even greater meaning to our First Citizen Award. This is the 72nd year that the Realtor Association has recognized a first citizen, and we're very proud to honor Slade Gordon this evening. <laughs> Realtors created this award to recognize outstanding leadership, commitment, and service. We created it at a time when our community needed vision and hope. That vision and hope continues to this day. We celebrate the community spirit of remarkable individuals and remarkable families. We recognize those who make a difference. We recognize those who lead and who lead by example. We recognize those whose work makes our Northwest such a wonderful place to live. The First Citizen Award, beside me here, is a symbol of our appreciation Thank you. to those who have inspired us to be more, to give more, and to care more. There is not a person in this room who has not benefited in some way by the service of our newest first citizen. On behalf of our thousands of realtor members, the greater Seattle community, and all Mariner fans, it is my privilege to present our 72nd First Citizen, a man of extraordinary leadership and talent, Slade Gordon. Thank you. Thank you, dear. On an April morning in 1956, I was an Air Force First Lieutenant walking from law office to law office in downtown Seattle, seeking employment pending my imminent release from the military. It was not a triumphal procession. <laughs> I remember a suggestion from the famed lawyer Al Schweppe that because the market was tight in Seattle, I should try Port Townsend. <laughs> but my most vivid memory of that morning was the confidence that no matter how far I walked that day, I would not see or be seen by a single person whom I knew or who knew me. And that my future life here was a book of blank pages. Not exactly incidentally, but it was only a few months later that I met John Ellis in the Young Republicans, the single person at this event and in this state whom I have known longer than any other individual. I had come here three years earlier just long enough to take and pass the bar exam. Having chosen Seattle as my destination out of an atlas and an almanac during my final year at Columbia, after rejecting Chicago, Boston, and New York, the three cities in which I had grown up. I remember my mother saying, I can read a map, Slade. I know you went as far from Boston as you could get. <laughs> <laughs> I was also burdened by the knowledge that I had been raised right by a solid and loving family, exposed to a strong work ethic though not strong enough to persuade me to enter the family seafood business, given a priceless education in the world's greatest nation, 
and was thus required to justify those investments by repaying them with interest. Even then, that thought led me in the direction of politics and public service. What I did not understand then was how overwhelmingly dependent I would be on hundreds or thousands of others in order to be enabled to make that repayment. Many of them are here tonight. My kid brother and godson, Nat Gordon, represents the family left behind in Boston, but not left out of mind. He and my brother Mike and my sister Mary Jane have certainly demonstrated that it was not necessary to leave Boston to make a mark on their world and to make it a better place. But here, it was my great good fortune less than a year from that April morning to meet the love of my life, Sally, and to start the Western family, including Todd, Sarah, and represented on this program by our youngest, Becky, and who collectively with seven grandchildren are the joy of my life. It was my great good fortune to begin a career of politics and public service barely two years after that April morning with a campaign for state representative in which my newlywed wife went doorbelling with me on the evening on which we returned from our honeymoon. <laughs> and the success of which was due in large measure by Dan Evans, who knew far more people in my legislative district than I did. <laughs> the upside, of course, has been the opportunity to affect dramatic changes in the shape of our common community. The first of these, about which you have heard, one not found in the job description of either the Attorney General or of a United States Senator, was the creation and preservation of the Mariners, represented here so eloquently by my friend and its president, Chuck Armstrong. But the greatest challenge and thrill of 12 years as Attorney General I had to have been in representing the state of Washington in 14 arguments before the United States Supreme Court. As you have heard on seven of those occasions, Jim Johnson played a role in my preparation. With questioning as sharp as that of any justice, a perfect rehearsal for his present position on our state's Supreme Court. I first met Mike McGavick when he was about six years old and was trundling campaign flyers around his Wallingford neighborhood for his father's first run for the legislature. He thereafter was a key to my first election to the Senate, served on my first Senate staff, and then managed my return to the Senate in 1988. Early in the course of that campaign, a day came on which my arithmetic mind told me that Mike was half as old as I was to the day. My first thought then was how humiliating it was to learn a new lesson in politics every single day from a kid half my age. <laughs> but those lessons and his genius gave me two more terms in the Senate. Kelly Daniels started in my DC office and then was my campaign driver before she brought joy and laughter to my Senate staff. On the second or third occasion on which she drove me, chattering away nonstop, <laughs> I said to myself, Kelly Carlson, some guy is going to be smart enough and lucky enough to marry you, and he will be happy every day of the rest of his life. Corey, lucky you. <laughs> Philip Zellico represents my post-Senate career. I met him as he managed an election reform commission on which I served in the immediate aftermath of the Florida Chads controversy that decided the 2000 presidential election. That commission, as he has told you, was shared by two former presidents and included a host of additional huge egos. Philip managed them in such a way as to get exactly the results he wanted from the beginning. 
recommended recommendations substantially accepted by Congress. After a subsequent endeavor together in the field of national security, I recommended him to be the staff director of the 9-11 Commission, perhaps the most high profile and successful such commission in history. Philip was the primary author of its report, writing in prose that almost won a National Book Club Award for the year, and that a Boston critic described as an epic in the tradition of Homer. In each case, however, these stories illustrate vividly the proposition that no constructive life is spent alone that we are all com co <coughs> creatures of the communities in which we live. For no one is that proposition more valid than it is for me. Many of you in this room have contributed to the opportunities I have had to engage in public service and without whom it would never have come to pass. I spoke earlier about that first walk along the streets of Seattle when no one would know who I was. Today, nine years after the end of my Senate career, it is unlikely that on any such walk I will not, that I will not be stopped by someone who wishes to comment on some comment aspect of that career. In fact, I can say if all of the people in that nine years who have told me that they voted for me had actually done so, I would likely <laughs> still be a member of the Senate. <laughs> But it is those people on the street, my family, this evening's speakers, and you gathering here tonight who are the cause of this honor and its true recipients. And so it is to you all, to the realtor genius who conceived of this event 72 years ago, and to those of you who have kept that magnificent tradition alive for a long lifetime, that I offer to you both my delight and my gratitude. <laughs>